or the War and Peace Report. I am Amy Goodman. Senators Barack Obama and John McCain are holding their second debate tonight at Belmont University in Nashville, Tennessee. The town hall-style debate will be moderated by NBC's Tom Brokaw. While the candidates are expected to spar over the economy, the war in Iraq, and health care, there's one issue both Obama and McCain have agreed on, the development of so-called clean coal technology to reduce the environmental impact of burning coal. Obama's repeatedly praised clean coal in campaign speeches, including his acceptance speech at the Democratic National Convention in Denver in August. As president, as president, I will tap our natural gas reserves, invest in clean coal technology, and find ways to safely harness nuclear power. I'll help our auto companies retool so that the fuel-efficient cars of the future are built right here in America. John McCain has also been a vocal supporter of clean coal technology. There's another area that's important, and that's clean coal technology. Uh, despite what may have been said by someone else, we're going to have to continue to build coal-fired plants. And what we need to do, though, is improve and develop the technology for clean coal technology so we don't continue polluting and continue to contributing to greenhouse gas emissions which, which threaten our very planet. While McCain and Obama have painted clean coal as a panacea that'll help solve the nation's energy problem, many environmental and scientific groups have questioned whether the burning of coal can ever be clean. An editorial in today's Los Angeles Times describes the phrase clean coal as an Orwellian marketing slogan invented by coal interests. The paper criticized both campaigns for embracing coal while claiming to be interested in fighting global warming and pollution. Well, today we'll host the debate you won't hear tonight in the presidential debate. Michael Bruhn is executive director of Rainforest Action Network and author of the new book, Coming Clean, Breaking America's Addiction to Oil and Coal. Joe Lucas is the vice president of communications for the American Coalition for Clean Coal Electricity, a coalition formed earlier this year to promote clean coal technology. The coalition's members, including many of the nation's largest coal companies. We welcome you both to Democracy Now! Joe Lucas, let's begin with you in Washington. Why why do you think clean coal is the answer? And how important is it to you that both main party presidential candidates agree on the issue of clean coal? Well, Amy, it is not the answer. It is part of a, a lot of answers. I mean, meeting America's growing demand for electricity, or the world's growing demand for electricity, for that matter, is going to require us to use all of our available energy resources, coal, wind, solar, and others. And so coal is 50 percent of our electricity we use here each day. We have more energy in the form of coal right here in America than the entire rest of the world has oil. And over the last 30 years, we've made great progress in ensuring with technology using coal to generate electricity has a, a lesser in, uh, impact on the environment. And going forward, we realize that a part of these technologies will be used to capture and store carbon. So we can meet America's growing demand for energy. We can do it cleanly. And we can also meet the challenge of reducing greenhouse gas emissions and at the same time keep electricity reliable and affordable for American families. So, Michael Brown, what's your problem with it? Uh, well, the, the words clean and coal really shouldn't be in the same sentence together. Coal is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions in the country. It's the largest, uh, fastest growing source of greenhouse gas emissions on the planet. It's also the largest source of mercury poisoning in the country. And the American Lung Association estimates that 24,000 Americans die prematurely each year from, uh, due to pollution from coal-fired power plants. Mm -hmm. The choice that we have is whether or not to funnel billions of dollars towards so-called clean coal technology or begin the transition right now towards solar and wind and clean energy. I wanted to turn for a minute to the debate, um, uh, the debate between uh, the vice presidential candidates, uh, Palin and Biden. So-called clean coal came up in the Thursday vice presidential debate between Sarah Palin and Joe Biden. Barack Obama and Senator Biden, you've said no to everything in trying to find a domestic solution to the energy crisis that we're in. You even called drilling safe, environmentally friendly drilling offshore as raping the outer continental shelf. There, with new technology, with tiny footprints even on land, it is safe to drill and we need to do more of that. But also in that all of the above approach that Senator McCain supports, the alternative fuels will be tapped into, the, the nuclear, the clean coal, I was surprised to hear you mentioned that because you had said that there isn't anything such a thing as clean coal. And I think you said it in a rope line, too, at one of the rallies. 
My record, just take a look at the record. My record for 25 years has supported clean coal technology. A comment made in a rope line was taken out of context. I was talking about exporting that technology to China so when they burn their dirty coal, it won't be as dirty, it will be clean. Michael Brune, what's the difference between clean and dirty coal? As president, uh, there, what we need to understand is that there's not a single coal plant in the country that, act, that can actually capture its greenhouse gas emissions. The coal industry itself will say that the technology to capture and store greenhouse gas emissions is at least a decade away. And so the difference between clean and dirty is that one is real. The coal is the, is the dirtiest form of energy production and dirtiest energy source on the planet. And one is a marketing creation. The coal industry, the big coal, uh, coal companies and the utility industry have a problem on their hands in that they, their, their substance is the largest source of greenhouse gas emissions and one of the largest sources of air and water pollution on the planet. They can't clean up the, the product, so they have to clean up the image. Joe Lucas. Amy, I guess we could play this game back and forth all day. I mean, uh, Michael is correct. We don't have a plant here in the United States today that has commercially installed carbon capture technology. Also, by the same token, we don't have any wind farms today that can produce steady forms of electricity that make it possible to displace traditional energy resources like coal. The fact is, it is not an either-or solution here. We're going to need both wind, solar, as well as what we call baseload power, like coal, nuclear, and other resources, to meet that constant, steady demand of electricity we use here in this country. Mm -hmm. Going forward, we're a lot closer to having the technology that will allow us to capture and store carbon from greenhouse gas or, or to restore to capture and store greenhouse gas emissions from coal plants and this whole issue of how to have these sort of on-demand renewables simply are not there. Today, wind and solar account for less than 2% of our electricity here in the United States. And even with Herculean growth over the next 30 years, that's still only going to be about 4%. Now, that's not to slam renewables. That's just to say, if we're going to have reliable power here in the United States to power our economy, to ensure that when we flip the light switch at night that the light does come on, we're still going to need to have domestic energy resources, reliable energy resources like coal, and with technology, and I guess the point that I'm making is we're supporting the development of these technologies, and we would like to have other groups like Michael's join us to ensure that these technologies do come into the marketplace as soon as possible. Michael from of Rainforest Action Network. Sure. Well, what we can remember is that uh, the solar and wind industries are going, growing dramatically faster than the coal industry right now. We added three times more wind capacity in 2007 than we added new coal capacity. A new large wind farm was just approved off the state of New Jersey. Another wind farm was approved off the state of Delaware. Massive solar farms are being approved in Arizona, New Mexico, California, Utah, the Saudi Arabia of Sun. The, the reality, one thing that I will agree about that Joe says is that coal will be here for some time to come. Coal produces 50% of our, our electricity and it will take some time to phase that out. The point is that every dollar that we invest in clean or in coal technology, in the coal in industry infrastructure, is a dollar that is better invested in solar and wind. We know, we know that the future economy has to be powered by clean energy. Why not go all in for clean energy today rather than continuing to perpetuate our addiction to the dirtiest fuel on the planet? Well, and Michael, I guess what I would say is when you say invest in clean energy, I would agree with you there. And with that investment in clean coal, coal can be clean energy. If you look at Vice President Gore's plan, when he talks about clean energy, he squarely says that carbon capture on coal plants meets his definition of clean energy. And that's what we're saying. And we're not saying let's take money away from renewables to put into clean coal. We're saying let's build, let's bake a big enough pie here so that going forward we do have renewables added to the mix. We have uh, clean coal added to the mix. We have all these things that will ensure that we meet our growing demand for electricity, as well as make sure that we have technology that can be, uh, as Barack Obama said, we can have technology and that can be sent overseas to places like China and India where coal use is continuing to grow. Let me go for a moment, since you raised, Joe Lucas, uh, the issue of Al Gore. I wanted to ask you <clears throat> about his recent comments, uh, the Nobel laureate Al Gore calling for civil disobedience against carbon-emitting coal plants. You're well, a I young that, person. 
looking at the future of this planet and looking at what is being done right now and not done, I believe we've reached the stage where it is time for civil disobedience to prevent the construction of new coal plants that do not have carbon capture and sequestration. Joe Lucas, uh, Vice President of Communications for the American Coalition for Clean Coal, your response. I think that Vice President Gore's uh, statement is misplaced there. We have another problem in this country, and that is electricity demand is growing twice the rate that we're adding new capacity right now. And one of the things that we lose sight of is once a new coal plant is proposed, it's somewhere between eight 